and all it is is the command gk sudo nautilus but I use that to just run Nautilus with root privileges. Sometimes you need root privileges to go out of your home folder and to copy and paste and do the things that you want to do as an administrator. Um, I'm going to go into media and now if I were to go into these folders these are actually partitions and hard drives. It's a representation thereof. They're not actually files and folders in that folder per se. That's because they've been mounted. And media is sort of the default folder there. But I want to mount these automatically and depending on the permission that I'm going to give people on the network when I set them up as Windows shares, I need to mount them with the appropriate mask and the appropriate read and write level of, of permission. Okay, so um, I'm going to unmount these and you can use sudo umount um, with the dash all option but I don't want to do that because that will unmount more things than I want. So right now I'm just going to do sudo umount and it would be the folder that they are mounted to. Well before I do that, watch if I hit the mount command take a look at what is mounted and how it is mounted. So you can see data 1, data 2, data 3, and data 4 There's there are my folders. And here's SDA4, SDB1, SDG1, and SDH1. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and unmount them. And media and let me go start out with data 1 and two, and three, and four. Okay. And now, again, if I were to use my mount command, I can verify that they are no longer mounted. So that's that's one way to mount them. Um, let me go ahead and add these comment tags back in. And that's, that's the old school way. The new school way um, is to use a universally unique identifier, or UUID. And by default, if you'll notice, look what Linux put up here. You know, it was a UUID. Either way will work for loading things so that you can then share them on a Windows network. But um, let's let's do it the the new you know fashionable way, I guess. All right, so let's use our UUIDs, our universally unique identifiers. So here's the mounting the, the new school way. The, you know, other than that, the syntax is pretty much the same. We're going to stay with the defaults. I'm going to keep using these folders here that I've created in media to mount to. Um, now the way to get this, I, notice I put some notes up here of different commands that you can use. But if you don't know what your IDs are, there's a couple of ways that you can get those IDs. I can go sudo and blkid, and if I do that, notice that look at all the partitions here. It'll give me uh, you know, in this case, the UUIDs for those. But if you know, if I don't want to do that, I could also do um, ls dash l, and I want to go div and disk and by um, UUID, and if I do that, I can view the contents. And let me pull this up here. Or pull it down here, actually, I'm sorry. And same thing, so here, here are my UUIDs, all right? So that's sort of sort of the, the, the newfangled way to mount things here. I'm using a universally unique identifier. Now say that three times as fast as you can. <laughs> um, but with this coming out, let me save the file. And let me clear this. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to call sudo mount dash a to automatically mount all of those drives and we pull these over here and now you can see again here are my mounts and the same permission if I want to you know I've, I've got read and write access them they're all read write I can delete create modify uh, things as I need to so um, we're gonna leave those in I'm gonna go ahead and unmount them uh, for now And again, it would just be the folder. Um, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so we'll unmount all those drives. And I can see that they are no longer mounted.
And that being said, again, let's just kind of review the syntax a little bit um, because there's a lot you'll do in networking Linux, um, whether it's Fedora, Ubuntu. The, there are free server versions of Ubuntu and Fedora out there that are wonderful, by the way. I, I tried a 64-bit ver version that was pretty nice. Um, but at, at some point, you're going to have to you know, deal with the FS tab configuration file, which is just your hard drives. So it might be worth going over a little bit of the, uh, you know, the, the syntax. Um, now there's a couple of other commands, p-mount and p-u-mount, for mounting and, uh, and unmounting removable media. And the way that that is usually, the, you know, most everything's going to be mounted inside of media with Ubuntu by default. And then let's kind of break it down here. I wanted to break down the syntax. So if you look at it, um, you know, off of Ubuntu's website, the way they list the syntax, it's, you know, device, the mount point, the file system, options, dump, and FSCK order. So if we break that down, let's take a look at each one of this. Well, we've already taken a look at these two, the device and the mount point. And that is, the device can either be the universally unique identifier, the UUID, um, which you can find with the command BLKID, or you could simply do this. You could do F to space dash L and find the partition that you want and, and do it that way. All right, so that's this first part, device. Now the mount point, that's the folder that you make with make directory uh, and that you chmod with whatever permissions you want, wish to allow, the POSIX permissions, and that's this here. That's what we're mounting to. And, and whether I do it this way, old school, or whether I do it this way, new school, it doesn't matter. This part is the same, right? So now we, you know, we understand this part, we understand this part. So what about you know, the, the file system here? Well, these are some of the file system types, and there are many that Linux, uh, you know, Ubuntu, Fedora can mount and, and deal with. EXT2, if it's old Linux, EXT3 or EXT4, a journal file system, riser file system, riser 4, um, you know, Macintoshes, um, auto would simply automatically, you know, it would scan it, figure out what it was formatted as and, and choose the appropriate type, so that's sort of a default, the most common. ISO 9660, if it's, um, you know, a CD-ROM or DVD device like that, a swap partition, FAT32, FAT16, NTFS, and finally, just a note down here about, let me pull this over because it's kind of bleeding over, and actually I put all that on the same line, but I enlarged the text so you could see it. There you go. But um, remember that this is read-only, so if you want to be able to write to, you know, for security purposes, that's what you might want. You might not want to allow people to, and this is a multi-boot setup, and I have Windows on a partition, and I have Linux, and maybe you don't want people to write to your NTFS partitions, but if you do, you're going to need to use NTFS-3G to, and there's a typo there, <laughs> uh, you know, to allow read-write access, okay? Now, in addition to this, you know, this option here being a local type, you know, local file system partition or drive connected physically to the server, um, the server could also go out and connect over the network via network share, and that could be NFS if it's Unix, Samba if it's Windows, or SIFS. And the way that works, um, here's example one. Okay, so I have another computer named Galactica. Here's the host name, and there's the folder. And all right, I'm going to mount whatever you know some shared folder on that machine. You know, this could be the IP address or whatever. And I'm going to choose sys. And this is kind of deprecated, so the common internet file system is really going to be used instead of server message block signing or Samba. And then user. So I'm going to allow any user to you know to um, view the contents thereof. Auto. So um, automatically select the file system, and then the credentials. I'll, I'll make myself a file. I'll, you know, and I'll w within that file. I need to put two things: um, the name of the Samba user that has permission to access that across the network, and the Samba user's password. Okay. Um, you know, there's just a, a couple of other options here, but you know, no perm would again give them yeah, you know read write access you know, options on that particular uh, network share.